And we're taking a look at some knives here today, and this time we're looking at a uh, cool one, in my opinion, one of my favorite knives. I'm a Russian uh, bayonet collector, so these are sort of neat for me because they're Russian. And it's the we're going to be taking a look at the HB101, which is the survival knife that's made in Russia at the Izmash factory, which is where the AK-47s are made. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one, which is just a spare box. We'll dig into the box here. This is my open one. Um, but before I do, I'm just going to mention that uh, what we're looking at is the actual survival knife. you got to be careful if you ever go to buy one of these, though, because there's this HB5 with the sheath, which is not the HB1-1. And it's awesome. It's a, it's a real Russian uh, bayonet. But it's a bayonet, not a survival knife. I guess they have to call it a survival knife for some reason. But it's actually just an, a made-for-export uh, version of the of the basically the current uh, Russian bayonet. So while it's awesome, it's not a survival knife, and it's not what most people are looking for when they read "survival knife with sheath" on the uh, package. So uh, again, this is just the uh, the modern. AK-74 slash AK-47 bayonet and it is cool but it's sort of a topic to itself and I don't know if anybody's interested I'll do a video on it but uh, basically just be careful when you buy these don't buy the HB5 if you're looking for an actual survival knife so let's dig into the survival knife what we're looking at here is again this Russian survival knife made in the Izmash factory and what you get in the box is the box and if you have a Doberman you get a box that's been chewed on comes in this sort of heavy newspaper type material that I suspect might be impregnated with oil or something because I see it on a lot of the knives and things that come across from Russia we've got a piece of paper that says something like uh, parts packed in inhibitor paper to prevent them from corrosion what do you know so that's telling me not to eat that paper probably and then we've got some uh, instructions and the instructions are important because you can see it comes with a bunch of stuff like a real survival knife is supposed to so um, what do we got 18 page instructions ending off with cool Russian stamps and whatnot so they they sell for about a hundred bucks these knives if I remember right so uh, you know it's nice to know that they paid a little bit more attention than just watching it roll off the assembly line you know somebody at least picked up their arm and stuck a rubber stamp down on that book to let us know that uh, you know they'd taken a look at this knife so let's get to it what we're looking at is uh, fairly substantial I'm not gonna say it's lightweight it's uh, sort of like an AK crude and heavy uh, it's one pound six point six ounces with the sheath here so um, again not a very lightweight knife it's definitely not something I would consider a fighting knife either um, looking at the bottom we get the cool Ishmash logo which probably most people care less about but I think it's kinda neat we've got a uh, leather nylon and kydex sheath so they covered all their bases with that one um, up at the top here is where the leather comes into play and so they've got this modern knife with all kinds of kydex and stuff and they went with a uh, crazy leather stud or leather with a hole in it a stud with a folded over piece of leather and it's well made but it's sort of big and bulky when they could have done something else now what I will give them you know the, the tried and true leather like this is silent it doesn't really make any noise and because they covered the bottom with that fold of leather there is no noise being made here so I guess in a survival situation I'd rather have a knife that's silent um, looking at the top of the frog or the belt strap here I call it almost you know a drop leg style knife it is gonna slap against your leg if you are walking or running with it um, it has this sort of a unique attachment where this D or oval comes in and clips on this clip here and this way I am assuming you could could quickly put it through a belt um, I'm not sure why this would open up but I think this is just to allow for different size belts. Of course, they have winter in Russia. We don't here in Arizona. So I suppose maybe that has something to do with wearing it in the winter. 
um, but it seems pretty strong nice strong attachment the rivets are super strong you know I've looked at quite a few cheap knives some of our reviews are of these cheaper knives and Russian stuff is not cheap it's definitely overbuilt and this is definitely something that if I needed I might not grab this to go out in the wilderness but if someone gave this to me and I was in the wilderness, I'd appreciate it. It would last a while. You have a couple of different carry options with it. It's not the worst knife to be stuck with. Um, so let's dig into the sheath a little bit more. First off, we got this little screw off thing here and I got screwed on mine. It's supposed to have a compass in there, I think, and I don't have a compass. So this is sort of, um, this is like a metal, probably aluminum cap with a rubber O-ring and this is the kydex and it's threaded into the kydex so I have no idea what I would use this for I could put something the size of my thumbnail in here and it would be waterproof so salt or I don't know something anyway that's a container that I believe would have a, a, a compass normally this is a uh, material probably a sharpening material uh, then on the back it's kind of getting into the unique parts of it we've got this flip down sort of panel that's just gonna flip down out of my way and it holds a length of, co of cord on it and this doesn't remove so it's just sort of designed to slip down out of the way to, to get to that cord take the knife out now um, on this side of the sheath there's this sort of button so I'm gonna push that button and now the sheath sort of opened into a scissor shape and that unlocks these two blades which are sort of in this back section the blade the knife itself was in here and these two blades a saw blade and another knife blade were in here so they're sort of stowed next to the blades and we'll get into them in a minute so um, the sheath opened up though there's this button Kind of a big clunky button but it's going to work for a long time that button opens up and as these flip apart it allows these to come out and now you've got wire cutters down here that's the first tool so now i've got a set of wire cutters just like uh, or a, a heck of a lot like the uh, wire cutters on the russian bayonets and i suspect the reason for this is there's a heck of a lot of barbed wire in russia i really don't know why they go so nuts about cutting barbed wire but heck i'd rather have a barbed wire cutter and never need it than to be stuck somewhere with barbed wire between me and something that I need to get to. So um, we've got the compartment slash compass area. We've got this sharpening section. We've got the um, wire cutter, barbed wire cutter. And we've got this section of uh, cord back here that, you know, it's actually pretty handy to have the cord in such a way that you don't need to, um, we can of open the cord now. Uh, in such a way that you don't need to wrap your whole sheath up or your handle you know it's it's definitely spare cordage so that's nice to have uh, but it does add to the bulk and potentially somebody might snap that off of there or something I don't know if there's any other purpose for that part of the sheath this part alone is pretty darn heavy but we're not done yet um, up here where the um, wire cutters are I'm gonna open it again these blades slip down here I had to look here these blades slip down and as you close it again now that blade is in place so now I don't know if I put it in the right way or not but whatever I did there I put it in so that I have this sort of gut hook that's unfortunately not sharpened on one side it needs to still be ground on one side to create a blade but I've got this hook and I've got this blade here and I've got a substantial grip for that so it's literally a second knife um, to, oh, to get it out of there because it's in there securely I push the button back here and now it's loose um, potentially because of the holes and everything you could use this as a spear very very easily and I suspect that little hook would be great for catching fish or whatever so now uh, in place of that blade I'm putting in this saw blade put it in clip it back and again I've got a fairly decent size handle for this saw I've got an aggressive saw on one side and a less aggressive perhaps a metal saw on the other side I think this might be a little too thick to act as a hacksaw but 
Um, you know, if you had nothing else, I imagine this probably will cut through some metal. This will definitely cut through some wood. It's a good cut on this saw. I'm not sure how well the clarity is going to show up, but it's a good crisscross type of saw blade cut. So I'm going to take that blade out, and we'll just go ahead and leave these out, I guess. So now you've got you know quite a bit of stuff going on with the sheath, and now you can see why it's a good idea to have the sheath um, have the ability to come off of the belt relatively quickly because there's so many tools that you would need to do off the belt. Now we're getting into the knife itself, which is pretty darn cool. And it's not really a bayonet. It has no similarity to the shape of a bayonet or any of the AK bayonets. Or um, Really, it looks more like a machete, if anything. It's got a bit of a curve to the blade here. And a fairly interesting chisel point. So it is definitely a spear point. However, don't think I would throw this thing as a spear. Um, We've got, again, the HB-101 down here, the Ishmash logo, which is kind of neat. Very large hilt, so there's no way your hands are going to slip forward. It's got kind of an interesting shape, I'm going to call it, to the grip here. Um, feels good in the hand. I've never used this as a collector's thing for me. I'm never going to use this as a knife, and I haven't used it as a knife. At least I don't think I'll ever use it as a knife. Um, so I can't get, really give you much review on how comfortable it is when you're actually using it. I suspect that it must be just about as strong as a knife like this can be, but because you can see that this plug came out of there, there's no way this blade can be attached more than that little segment there. However, again, this is a piece of Russian tool, and i just never seen a, an ineffective Russian tool, so I suspect of all the knives of this style, this is going to be one of the stronger ones. Um, inside that battery, or inside that grip, uh, we had the end cap, which is aluminum, which is really a weak point as far as this strictly as a survival knife, because not only does it really make it an ineffective hammer, being aluminum, it's an ineffective, an ineffective strike surface as well. So this really wouldn't work as an impact weapon or an impact tool for that matter. Um, as far as the case, this is in the in the handle. You know, compared to some of them where they come in a plastic baggie, this is definitely, you know, a little higher quality. What we've got is um, a cap on each end. I need to bust that cap off, as they say. And uh, once that's off, there's a, what is this, a couple of fishing weights inside of a plastic, uh, or excuse me, inside of a, like an oil paper type of material. Now we've got some fishing line and some thicker mm, cotton thread, I guess. Very small fishing hook, which is, I think, realistic for a survival situation. And a small sinker. Looks like I'm going to need to take both caps off. So inside of this one, we've got a wrap of paper, and I see why it didn't come through. The The cylinder is in two pieces, so um, it wouldn't allow the stuff to go all the way through. So we've got the fishing material on the one side, we've got the plastic tube, which I suspect you could probably use as a bobber, and then uh, we've got another piece of paper. And inside that paper, we've got a strike surface for a matches. And inside of a piece of plastic, I don't know why that is. We've got this interesting tool that's sort of a tool. It's a point on this end, and it's got some shape here. And I'll have to take a look at the instructions again because I didn't even remember that was in there. We've got sort of a crazy Russian looking safety pin. In Russia they don't care about safety so I guess I just have to call it a pin. And then uh, a needle with a pretty big um, eye of the needle which is good. And then a little bit larger fishing hook but still not overly huge. So we've got a couple of different options for fishing. These, uh, I guess the Russians figure you're going to be doing a lot of fishing when you're surviving out there. So. Um, that's the tools that are included in this one, and I'm curious about the shape of that one tool, so I'm going to take a second to bore everybody by looking at the uh, 
instructions here. It looks like our functions for the main types of works performed with the survival knife. Number three, making the way easy. I like that. Storage, transportation, marking the sign of conformity with the obligatory certification and certification agency code. Well, it's good to know that it's certified with the agency. We've got a container is complete with the following items. A Capron fishing line, cotton thread, sewing needle, fish hook, fish hook. They removed the waterproof, windproof matches, and I suspect that's what was in this plastic. And I guess that probably had something to do with shipping it overseas. A grinder for matches, which is in there. A Dobrinka lead sinker. A coil for fishing line and thread. And I guess that's this styrofoam coil, which could definitely be used as a bobber now that I think about it. And then it says pin and awl. So this is the pin, so now this turns into an awl. And, oh, okay. Took me a minute to realize it. It's the exact same shape as one of the pegs on this tool, on this blade. So that means we can go back to the sheath here and plug it in one side and then lock it. And now we've got a wicked little strong needle sticking out the bottom of our sheath. And I imagine Russians and ninjas could use that for something. So that's interesting. Learned something new here. So that's the um, survival knife model HB-1-01 made in Izmash. Same factory as the AK-47. And uh, there you go.